So while all eyes have been focused on the kangaroo court trial with Donald Trump, a new story dropped a couple of days ago about the Biden administration, which apparently since 2022 has secretly, quietly been granting a quasi amnesty to hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens. This, by the way, at the same time that the Biden administration has been fighting tooth and nail to stop states like Texas and Iowa, among others, from arresting and or deporting illegal immigrants within their borders. Now, to talk about this story, I want to read to you some excerpts from a story published in the New York Post. This is back on the 2nd. This is written by Jenny Tayer, and the article is titled, Biden admin offers mass amnesty to migrants as it quietly terminates 350,000 asylum cases. She writes that while the Biden administration is attempting to look like it's getting tough on the border, behind the scenes, it's operating a program of mass amnesty for migrants. Data shows that since 2022, more than 350,000 asylum cases filed by migrants have been closed by the U.S. government if the applicants don't have a criminal record or are otherwise not deemed a threat to the country. This means that while the migrants are not granted or denied asylum, their cases are terminated without a decision on the merits of their asylum claim. They are then removed from the legal system and no longer required to check in with authorities. The move allows them to legally, indefinitely roam the U.S. without fear of deportation, effectively letting them slip through the cracks. The number of migrant asylum cases being closed before going through the court system has skyrocketed since Biden took office. Andrew Arthur, a former immigration judge who works for the Center for Immigration Studies, said... This is just a massive amnesty under the guise of prosecutorial discretion. You're basically allowing people who don't have a right to be in the United States to be here indefinitely. Now, this is deeply concerning for many reasons. We already have 14 states that do not require identification when voting. So as much as the mainstream media and the Biden administration wants to tell you that there is no chance of illegal aliens voting in federal elections, I'd say the odds of that happening, at least to some degree, are probably close to 100 percent. And of course, there is also the incredible drain of resources on the U.S. as we pay for the food and shelter of many of these illegal immigrants. And this is problematic because the amount of people crossing our borders has skyrocketed in just the last couple of years. Now, the New York Post article goes on to write that in 2022, under Biden, a memo issued by ICE's principal legal advisor, Kerry Doyle, and seen by the Post, instructed prosecutors at the agency to allow cases to be dismissed for migrants who aren't deemed national security threats. That year, 36,000 were ordered removed and 32,000 were awarded asylum and 102,000 had their cases dismissed or otherwise taken off the books, 10 times the number in 2014. In 2023, there were 149,000 cases in this latter category. And so far in the financial year 2024, which ends September 30th, the number are certain to surpass that with already having 114,000 cases closed. Since Biden assumed office, 77 percent of asylum seekers have been allowed to remain in the country, according to TRAC. That equates to 499,000 of the 648,000 who applied for asylum in the U.S. at the time. That is unbelievable. That is astounding. And this problem is only going to get worse. We know that there have been roughly about 10 million illegal aliens that have attempted to enter the U.S. between October 2019 and January 2024. This, by the way, is just the ones that we've encountered. How many more millions have slipped in? Over the last four years, we honestly have no way to know. But what I can say is this. In the last two years, there have been roughly five million people that we know of that have crossed the border, which is more people than were born here in the U.S. during that same time frame. These numbers are unsustainable. The Post goes on to write that the current backlog of asylum cases stands at 3.5 million and shaving them more than 100,000 people a year off of it makes the administration look better, sources told The Post. Once cases are closed, migrants are no longer in, quote, removal proceedings, end quote, and subject to deportation, the government's default position for all migrants admitted at the border. The migrants then are under no obligation to leave the U.S., and once cases are dismissed, the person is no longer monitored by ICE and required to regularly check in with them, unlike those still pursuing asylum claims. And this, by the way, is why they are so hellbent at blocking states 
from removing illegal aliens themselves. The federal government is purposefully flooding the country with non-U.S. citizens who will, someday, if left unchecked, be granted real amnesty with full rights as citizens. This includes the rights to legally vote in elections. This story only furthers to highlight the dangerous game that has been waged by our federal government with their intentional dereliction of duty at the border. As we've discussed before on this channel, this is not a new issue, but rather it is ramping up now at incredible rates. With nearly 5 million illegal aliens swarming our borders in just the past two years, and roughly an estimated 22 plus million illegal aliens inside our borders right now, as a whole, we find ourselves as a country at an important crossroads. If left unchecked, what will inevitably happen will be the granting of amnesty for these people. There have already been several attempts in just the past couple of years at granting citizenship to these people. And why that matters is, we have already granted amnesty once before, and the results deeply affected American politics. We're still feeling those results today. Now, what I'm referring to is 1986 under Ronald Reagan. It was called the Immigration Reform and Control Act, or also known as the Simpson-Mizzoli Act. It was a seminal moment in American history. There were roughly 3 million illegal aliens at the time who were given amnesty. And out of those 3 million, roughly half resided in California. California, by the way, had voted Republican in every national election from 1972 all the way up to 1988. But after amnesty would suddenly flip, turning deep, deep blue. But the question then is, why did this happen? Why would those granted amnesty mean that they're suddenly going to vote Democrat? How does that happen? Well, you see, those who come to this country illegally typically need government assistance. And those people who need government assistance while well, they tend to vote for the party that gives them the most stuff, which just so happens to be the Democratic Party. You can't really blame these people either. I mean, wanting to survive is a powerful motivator, even if the long-term welfare state is an addictive poison that ends up ruining entire generations of young people, trapping them in endless poverty. And this, by the way, is why the border battle has never been resolved. California becoming a deep blue bastion overnight gave the left a roadmap for a way to create permanent political power, all by creating an underclass of citizens who, out of necessity for survival, will give the Democratic Party endless votes. This is the end game to move to shift the country to a one-party system. If amnesty were to be granted today, especially considering how many illegal aliens now reside in swing states, there would be an instant generational shift in power. And that, my friends, would only just be the beginning. Let me ask you this. If amnesty were then granted now, do you really think that this would stop the flow of mass migration into the country? Of course not. In another decade, you could easily have another 10, 20 million illegal aliens waiting to become fresh citizens. A fresh new batch of eager voters ready and willing to overwhelm the will of the American people. Frankly, it is ingenious. What better way to transform a country then simply add enough new voters to override the old ones who don't share your vision of the future. The Biden administration knows what they are doing. And so shining a light on this action by the federal government and informing as many people as possible seemed to me crucial. And that's why we did this episode today. From the To Be Frank show, my friends, thanks for watching. I am Adrian, and I will see you all in the next episode.